Okay, so I'm going to try and um, talk about um, setting up um, a failsafe on CC3D. This um, is a little quad I have here, and it's got a um, CC3D in there on a case. But, um, you know, this thing's got a real cheap fly sky receiver in there. Now, on my more expensive quads, of course, I use um, different uh, uh, um, receivers that has a fail-safe button. And then, typically on the back of, a, of your transmitter, you just hit a button for fail-safe. And fail-safe, what I use it for is really, you know, if communication is broken between the quadcopter and, uh, and uh, the transmitter, the, the, the flight transmitter then um, you know what should it do so for my quads typically what I do is I set it so that it's just below hovering and um, so it slowly descends or descends more controlled towards the ground so you know the default on a CC3D of course is if you turn off a transmitter while it's flying it virtually goes to idle and will drop from the sky. The other side, you don't want to set failsafe so that it pulls the throttle right open and so when you lose communication you will never see your quad again. So this is a dangerous operation and you shouldn't just do this if you don't understand it. But that's basically what I use failsafe for on, on, on a 250 quad. Now bigger quads and airplanes, of course those have GPS's on and, and whatever and you'll set them to return to home. Uh, but, um, you know, quite like this without GPS or anything, you really just want to try and save a thing, but you don't want it to drop out of the sky and you don't want it to go back to where it was made. So, um, so the two options uh, are um, you get a more expensive uh, controller, uh, receiver, and you set fail safe on there. Or the second option is, of course, you set it inside the flight controller and I'm gonna show how I do it in, in a CC3D. So this is just a little scratch bolt or a, a cheap bolt that I have here. So on this guy I'm going to um, Welcome to the Trinity Nine XR Pro. Switch error, please check your switches. So uh, devil. I'm going to start up my little quad over here. And um, the first thing is what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and determine where is hover. So I'm going to take it up slightly. You can see uh, something like that. Okay, so that's hover. So um, I know it's working in on my receiver over here I have a, a little bit of a an advantage um, I can um, see some values over here when I um, move my throttle now not all receivers have this and you have to sort of judge it but I'm gonna read that value over there that minus 53 so I'm gonna just get the value of where it is that this thing hovers so um, let me try that That looks about somewhere there. And the value seems to be 35. So, there we go. So, the value that I got on my little transmitter is, um, it was a uh, value of about 35 is where it hovered. So, I um, don't know if you can see that. But, so, the... Um, I now know where it hovers. I now know where it hovers based on my controller setting over here. So I will now go ahead and uh, set it inside um, inside of uh, uh, um, the CC3D software. Um, just to give you an idea, and I'm going to remove the propellers for this little exercise because, as we all know, we don't want to hurt ourselves, um, especially indoors. 
So I'm going to remove my propellers. And um, with my propellers removed, I'm going to give you a little demo of what will happen if this guy was, uh, if, if I didn't set any failsafe. So I started it. You can hear the little motors running nicely. And I'm now going to turn off my controller. And as you can hear, they immediately go down to, the motors go down to um, basically idle position. To I'll turn my, con my receiver or my radio on again. And now I have control again. So it's, I'm flying happily. Everything's looking good. I turn off the power. And it basically goes to idle. So this is a problem for us. So, um, and that's what we're going to try and fix. That at, at, at least goes to just below hovering level instead of going to idle. Because if it went to idle like this, it would basically just drop from the sky. So let's try and uh, go into the software and, and set that. Okay, I'm uh, inside my uh, little machine over here. And I've connected my... Um, my uh, little quadcopter to ground control station, open pilot over here. So, uh, you know, first thing th that I have is, of course, if we go and look at my um, input, I have a, a, um, a, a, I have a setting over here that I can control, and that's this uh, flight mode. I've got it on channel 5. So, um, what I can do with that guy is I can uh, control um, my flight mode switches and you see this uh, I have a three position switch so if I switch you'll see that it jumps down to position two to flight mode two and position three flight mode three so I have that so what's important is you want to get one of these flight modes and in my case it's number one which is attitude uh, attitude, access locks, uh, you just want one that is not right. So um, basically when you go and in go into failsafe, you want to go into something that's going to level your plane, like uh, number one or number two. Number three, of course, if a plane was traveling at the 45 degree angle and it goes into failsafe, nothing's going to happen. It's going to continue to travel at a 45 degree angle. So that's the first thing. So I'm going to choose, let's say, number one. That's what I'm going to use. Okay, and uh, um, so then the second thing you, I, I do is I then go into the system over here, and I go into settings, and it's way down here somewhere, manual control settings, and there's the fail-safe channel and the fail-safe uh, flight mode switch position. So... This is one less than um, what you want it to be. So the position, when I go into failsafe, it's by default minus one, but I want this to be zero, uh, meaning it's going to choose one. If this was one, it would have chosen two. If this was two, it would have chosen three. I could set up one specifically for that. Maybe a fifth channel, I'm just going to use one that I've already set up. So it has to be one less than the channel. So I'm going to choose zero. And that will switch my switch to number one. And then my throttle, and this is now the, the interesting part, is I now need to, to change this value um, to what the, the value was previously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my, my copter. And as you remember, my little display over there, and again, if you don't have a display, you can move it to uh, the approximate position. So it was at 35. I'm going to move it to about um, just above that or, or, or a little bit lower on, on the throttle. So I don't want it 35 because that would make it hover. So I'm going to go to a, a value just below hover. 
And um, now I'm going to go look inside the values over here, the da data objects. And I am going to see... Um, there we go. Manual control command. I want to go read the value. So I'm going to set it a little bit lower than uh, um, actual... Uh, 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 um, uh, where it used to hover and somewhere there and the value I read under throttle is that 0 0.27 okay so 0 0.27 I'm gonna drop it a little bit more maybe 0 0.25 so that's the value I want I'm gonna disarm the guy uh, uh, the copter and so over here under throttle I'm gonna enter the value 0 0.25 so that's the value I wanted to go to the throttle and of course you can change these other guys but I, I want throttle to go to 0 0.25 and I want my fail safe to switch to position number 0 but plus 1 meaning to position number 1 so I'm gonna uh, write all of this away now I'm gonna write that value away and I'm gonna write all of these values away make sure it's written away and um, we're going to do the same uh, uh, test now uh, and um, uh, uh, see what failsafe brings me so. okay so this time now back on camera i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to uh, after my failsafe set i'm going to actually run the the motors that's idle speed you can hear it's idling i'm going to increase it to pretty high that is about more than halfway uh, on my throttle stick and I'm going to turn off the controller and this time you can hear just a slight pitch difference it doesn't go down to idle it drops to the value I had set 25% so um, if I bring back my controller and I bring it back to idle we can hear it go down to idle so let's try that quickly then um, with a uh, uh, little propellers on. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to start her. There she is flying. But now I'm going to turn off the controller. You can see the controller is now off, but it doesn't go down to idle speed. And there I've taken control again. So we can see that um, it goes to not completely dead. It also doesn't go to shooting through the roof. It goes to just below what I would deem hover. And it will slowly, at this point, if you will, to lose connection with your controller, it should slowly descend towards the ground. Maybe not as slow as you think. Uh, maybe it will be a bit faster, but at least it won't just drop out of the sky and, and hit the ground and, and be completely destroyed. So that's just basically how I set failsafe on a CC3D. Of course, this procedure is much, much easier if you've got failsafe on your controller. You basically just press a button and, and all of this is done for you. But if, you, if you're an economical guy like me and fly with real cheap receivers that does not have failsafe, that is a way you can set failsafe inside your uh, controller, your flight controller, and actually still have a benefit of uh, a flight controller. So... Um, you know, I hope that works. Um, but um, again, please be careful and don't do this with props on and stuff like that and set proper values. Thank you.